This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and in this video we're going to do some refactoring of our building generator so that we can start to kind of make it more modular and apply different settings so that we can generate different types of buildings rather than the same building every single time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into our building generator class and in here we're going to take this kind of one big, what's essentially one giant line of code and break it into some individual methods so that we can kind of take each step of our grammar um, individually. So I'm going to start by pulling out this new roof, and so I'm going to call a new method down here called static. It's going to return a roof, and it's going to be generate roof. And this is simply going to do what this does here. It's going to create the new roof. So I'm going to cut that from here, and I'm going to say return new roof. Next thing I'm going to pull out is generating the walls. So I'm going to say here, static wall array, generate walls. And this is going to return a new wall array of size 4 plus 4, which is basically the size that we have up here multiplied by 2. So essentially, again, we're just taking this content in here and extracting it out to here. Next, we're going to generate our story. So this is going to be static story, generate story. And again, here we're just going to do return a new story and instead of generating the new wall here we're going to actually call generate walls. Next we're going to generate the full array of stories so we'll say static story array generate stories and this is going to return a new story array, which is simply going to be our generate story right now. So we're still doing the exact same thing, but we're breaking these out into, like I say, individual methods rather than doing it all in one call. So that creates this for us. Next, we need to create our wing. So we will say static wing generate wing. In this case, we're going to return the new wing that we have here. And in this case, we're going to pass in both generate stories for the story array parameter, and then generate roof for the roof parameter. Clean this up a little bit. And we need to be sure to return that. Lastly, we just need to generate the wings. So we'll say static wing array generate wings is going to return a new wing array, which is simply going to take inside of it a generate wing. Because we're only creating one single wing, we can do this in this way. Okay, finally our building simply has to do, instead of returning um, the building with 4.4 four, and then that whole list of commands, we're simply going to say generate wings here. 
And so now everything is broken out so that we can take them individually and start applying some different settings to them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create our um, overall building settings. So rather than always saying that we want a building to be of size four times four, we're going to kind of establish that in a settings um, object, which is gonna be a scriptable object that we're going to use. So back over in Unity, we are going to create a new folder inside of our scripts folder. And this is going to be called generation settings. And inside of here, we are going to create a new C Sharp script called building settings. I'm going to open this up and we're going to just put in first an attribute. We're going to do the create asset menu attribute because we're going to want to be able to create multiple um, instances of the scriptable object. This makes it easy to do that. We're going to say menu name equals, I'm going to say building generation slash building settings. So there's going to be sort of this overarching building generation category where we're going to have a lot of these settings we can create. And the first one is going to be this overall building settings. Now I need this to inherit from scriptable object, not mono behavior. And I am going to get rid of start and update because they are no longer relevant. And in here, I'm going to have just a couple of variables right now. One is going to be a public vector to int called building size. And then I'm also going to have a property, which is going to be public vector to int called size. And this is going to essentially do the same thing, but it's only going to be a getter. And it's really just so that we have a shorter way to reference this. So I'm going to say get return building size. Now, there's a lot of reasons that this is not really that effective because technically someone could still go in here and set it by accident. But just for the purposes of when we're referencing this, this will just make it a little bit quicker. And that's why we're keeping that there. So now that we have a building settings object, we can actually pass this into our generator. And so we're gonna have to make some changes to what we're showing, what we're showing in the um, generator right now. So the first thing we're going to do is in our actual generate method, we're going to take in a parameter of building settings. So we're gonna say building settings, and I'm gonna call this settings here. And then for our size of our building, instead of doing um, the hard coded four, we're gonna say settings.size.x and settings.size.y. And that gives us the two sizes that we want. And then from here, each phase or each you know kind of section of this grammar as we go down we're going to want to continue to pass those settings because we're going to have eventually information in there that's going to be relevant to each of those so what i'm going to do is in generate wings i'm going to pass in settings and i'm going to make each of these um i'm actually going to make all of these at once right now i'm going to make all of these um method calls or method um profiles take in building settings as a parameter I'm gonna add all these in. I'm probably gonna start getting some errors because I'm calling methods that don't have the settings in there, but that's okay because we'll take this step by step through. So the first thing we're gonna do is in generating wings, we are simply going to yeah, take in building settings settings. And then when we return the new uh, wing array here, instead of just generating a wing with settings, we're also gonna pass in a couple other things. We're gonna pass in a new rect int of 0, 0, and then settings.size.x and settings.size.y. And then the number of levels that we're going to want, which is going to be 1. And so, oops. so what all this does for us now is that I need both of those, that's what I did. There we go. So we've got, so for generate wing, what we're now gonna take in is the settings that we have. We're gonna pass in the actual size and position of the wing, and we're gonna pass in how many, um, how many stories we want it to be in this case. So down here, we need to make our um, profile reflect that. So I'm gonna say here, rect int 
and call it bounds, and it's going to take in an integer called number of stories. So now instead of hard coding our rect int here, we're going to say bounds. And for our generate stories, we're actually going to have our generate stories also take in those bounds as well as the number of stories we want. So I'm going to change both of these here. I'm going to say, I'm going to add in rect and bounds again. I'm going to add in the int for the number of stories and in our generate. And so now up here, I can pass both of those in as well. So I'm going to say settings, bounds, and number of stories all get passed in there. Likewise, for our roof, our roof is going to want to know um, both the settings and the bounds. So I'm going to pass those in as well there. So down here, I'm going to say rect int bounds, and I'm going to pass in up here settings and the bounds. Now for generating a story, we also now need to know again the settings, the bounds, and the level because there may be situations where the um, level cares about like is it on the ground floor or not. So once again, we're going to say for generate story, we're going to pass the rect int bounds and the int for the number of stories. Though in this case, this is actually not the number of stories anymore. This is really the level of the story. So I'm going to change that to be level. And so up here, though, we are going to pass this in. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, so in this case here, we're going to pass in settings, bounds, and then just we're going to call it level one. That you know, Because for by default, we're only ever building a single level building, we're just going to pass in a number one there. And then finally, for generating the walls, we are once again going to take the settings, we're going to take the bounds, because that's going to tell us how many walls we're going to need, and we're going to take in that level again, because that's going to tell us do we have doors or are we on an upper level and don't want to have doors coming off of it, information like that. So in generate walls, we can pass in settings, we can pass in the bounds, and we can actually pass in the level, because this at this point, remember, is reflecting the level of the story. So inside of here, we can simply change these values from the um, four and four to bounds dot size dot x and bounds dot size dot y. And with all of that in place, now what we have is a building generator that's going to, instead of always generating a four by four building that's one story tall, at least right now we can control the size of that building. And we're gonna add in more ways to control that as we go, but for now we have that control over the size. So if I go back here to Unity, um, let's see here, I've got a missing, ah yes, in the building demo I'm going to need to pass in that settings. So for the building demo what I need to do is I need to create a public building settings variable, and I'm just going to call this settings. And then inside of the building generator call here, I can call and pass in those settings. So now back in Unity, I can go to my project folder. I'm going to go into assets. I'm actually going to create a new folder called settings files. They're not really files, but they're sort of files. And I'm going to create a building generation building settings object. I'm just going to call this basic. And here in building size, I'm going to change this to some value. Let's call it, um, let's say here, five by three for the building. And in my building demo, I can now drag this building settings into the parameter that's been exposed here in the inspector. And now when I hit play, I should see a building that is five by three. And we have success. We have a five by three building. And if I change that value in the scriptable object to something like seven times 100, now we get a very big, very long building. So we are having now success and we're able to kind of start manually controlling the procedural generation process. It's still not super exciting right now. It's always gonna create the same kind of building. That's seven, that's whatever the sizes are that we've established, but we're beginning to get that ability to control 
and start manipulating what kind of buildings this is going to create. And we're going to take this to the next step, creating more scriptable objects that are going to control how things like the wings are created, how many stories are created, how the roofs are created, things like that, in the next video. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.